been shot. Cut. That one was okay, Belinda. Let's go ahead and pick up the chase shots. Pete, I have a splitting headache. Well, let's get these scenes out of the way, then. I'll buy you an aspirin. As long as they're long shots, why can't Marge do it for me? That's what doubles are for. Belinda Daly does all her own stunt shots. It says so with the papers. Belinda. I told you I've got a headache. Shall we get Mr. Briscoe out here? Marge. Come over here. Miss Daly wants to fatten up your paycheck today. You'll drive the stagecoach. I said the producer, go ahead. What's the matter, Pete? This scene didn't call for wrecking the stagecoach. Good Lord. Is she hurt badly? She's dead, Mr. Briscoe. my picture, nothing else. But you'd think she might show one human emotion. Who's he? Him, he. She brought him on the set this morning. Introduced him around as Dan Adams. Her taste in boyfriends is improving. Don't you think? What do you think? There's not a killer in the crowd, Miss Daly. They seem like nice people. But you will take the job. Well, I'm too busy to be a bodyguard. Mr. Adams, Dan, you must believe I'm serious and I'm scared. I need an investigator to look into the things that have been happening to me. Please. Miss Daly. Uh, pardon the intrusion. Our producer said he'd like to see you in his office when I could spare you. Well, I can spare you now. Mr. Briscoe? He said he'd like to uh, meet your new friend, too. Go ahead, Dan. I'll be along as soon as I change. Show him where, Pete. My name's Dan Adams, Mr. Briscoe. Blend will be long in a minute. How do you do, Mr. Adams? Oh, I'm being rude. Would you mind pulling that chair over, please? I'm not supposed to lift anything. Exert myself. This business. You're old at 45, and this picture isn't making me any younger. So I heard about the accident. I'll bet you did. You agree with the sheriff's office, the stagecoach, the other close calls were accidents? Mr. Adams, if they'd happened to anybody but Belinda Daly, I'd be sure they were accidents. Well, who'd want to hurt her? Well, start with me. If I could deduct it as an entertainment expense, I might kill her myself. Then, try the Hollywood phone book. They're all suspect. <laughs> Whenever I hear you say something nice about someone, Jay, I know I must be the topic of conversation. 
Hello, darling. Is he trying to nip our romance in the bud? Why, I was just selling you big, darling. Pete said you wanted to talk to me. What about? Well, I wanted to talk about keeping you alive until my picture is finished. I thought it might be a good idea to put a detective on the set. He could pose as your boyfriend, in case those accidents are not accidents. What do you think of the idea? It's hard keeping ahead of you, isn't it, Jay? I'm only interested in my picture, darling. Well, it's nice to know that someone wants to keep me alive for any reason, for even a few days. And you'll pick up the tab, darling. <laughs> Four stories down, and no fire escape. No fire escape at any of the windows. No back door. Of course, if I'm right and someone is trying to do me in and make it look like an accident, well, they'd hardly do it in my own apartment. Why not? I wish you hadn't said that, now that I think of it. Anyway, whoever wants me has to come through this door. Can that skylight be opened? No, it can't be opened. Ah, uh, good. I'll just be a scream away in any event. I took the apartment across the hall. I heard you scream in a picture once. It brought a riverboat to shore. <laughs> well, that was dubbed in. Besides, you'd never hear me. I had this apartment soundproofed. Oh. Ah. In that case, maybe it'd be better if I... Uh... In that case, there's the telephone. It was just a thought. I think you're going to make a very comfortable boyfriend. Sit down. I'm so scared. Yes, I know. You know. You know I'm scared, but you don't believe anyone's trying to kill me, do you? If someone's trying to kill you, I'll find that out. When I find that out, I'll find out who. But I won't leave you until this is settled one way or the other. Thank you, Dan. Now, tell me about the near misses. Well, the first day on the set, a, a saddle came off a horse I was galloping. The uh, second night, a, a car tried to run me down in the studio parking lot. Oh, I know. Every one of them could have been an accident. Maybe I'm what the insurance companies call accident prone. I'll go into every one of those accidents. Now comes the old standard question every detective has to ask. Who stands to gain, or who hates you enough to want you dead? Well, wasn't Briscoe telling you I'm the most hated actress in Hollywood? Didn't he tell you, pick a name out of the telephone directory. It'll be somebody who hates Belinda Daly. Well, suppose we just talk about some of your best enemies. All right. The friends, the relatives, the survivors of all the bodies I climbed over getting someplace in this business. Nights, I can hear them out there in the darkness. Oh, Pete Brakeman, the director. Oh, yes, Pete. You are observant. He's not a very likely suspect. If he knew that stagecoach was rigged to kill or injure you, he could have stopped the action when Marge Randall doubled for you. Of course, Pete isn't a killer. He's a second-rate director. He could have been much farther ahead, except that I had him taken off a picture that might have made him great. I wanted the job for a friend. Walker Davis, your leading man. There's one thing more about Pete. About me, I mean. It was a long time ago, but I was married to Pete Brakeman when I had him taken off that picture for this friend. All right. Who else? Oh, Dan. Don't make me lay out any more of Belinda Daly's dreary past tonight. Uh, I'll pick you up in the morning. Seven o'clock? Six. I have to be in makeup at seven. And thank you. You'll keep this locked, huh? Ring 4 
207. Dan, there's a madman at the door. All right. Dan? Yes. Let me in. He rang the bell and said yes when I asked if it was you. Then he tried to crash in, but the chain held. You should have called me before you opened the door. Do you know him? I didn't really get a look at him, just a flash. An angry face, dark eyes, dark hair. I'll take a look around. You put this chain back on. Marge Randall's husband. He's the toughest fight double in pictures. No more, Dan. He doesn't know what he's doing. You killed Marge. She was killed doing your job. How can you say a thing like that? You're the big star who does all her own stunts. Yet this one time, this one time, you get a headache. I did have a headache. It wasn't even a stunt, just a chase shot, driving the coach. Did you tell her the stagecoach was rigged for an accident shot? She'd have had a chance to jump, maybe. Jack, it isn't so. But I do think the coach was rigged. The coach was rigged to kill Belinda, not your wife. Belinda knows nothing about it. Who is your friend here, anyway? Her friend is an investigator she hired to find out who's trying to kill her. If I weren't telling the truth, would I have hired him? Whoever tried to kill me, kill Marge. They're after me. That'll make sense if you think about it a minute. Since Marge died, I've been clear out of my mind. If you're right, I'd like to help get the character. Well, this is an action picture. There must be a lot of dangerous stunts still to do. Mr. Briscoe will do anything I ask. Arrange it, Miss Daly. I'd like to work that picture. Sorry about the fractured skylight. I'm glad you hired someone tough enough to stop me. Oh, well, my apartment across the hall doesn't have a skylight. I'll pack my toothbrush. Sorry to barge in. <laughs> well, I... Well, as I, I was saying, I, I'm i sorry to barge in. Oh, you're not barging in. Blend isn't here at the moment. 
Well, I... I see your pitching arm is still okay. Any message for it? Oh, Briscoe uh, made some script changes for tomorrow. Uh, once we get all those action scenes out of the way... <laughs> I, uh... I thought I'd go over them with her. You know where to call her? I'm not calling her. I'm calling the police. I don't buy you at all, friend. You're not her type. I'm glad you're concerned about her. I had you high on my list. List of what? Linda thinks someone's trying to kill her. And she hired you to find out who? <laughs> no, sir, not me. I love the dame. Well, that's not what she and Briscoe say. She's bugged on that everybody hates Belinda subject, Mr. Adams. It just isn't so. Well, she says she climbed over a lot of bodies to get where she is. She did, including mine and Walker Davis's. But it was a fair fight, and I was trying to do exactly the same thing to her. So were all the others. You don't hate the winner in a good fight, and nobody hates Belinda. Well, maybe somebody. Who did that? Jack Randall. He blamed Miss Daly for his wife's death, came after her. Did he hurt her? No, we um, talked things over and he left. Well, you're pretty good if you took him. Where is Belinda? She's spending the night with friends. But no matter. Tomorrow will be soon enough. See you on the set? Do you have any idea who might want Belinda dead? No, but I'll give it some thought. Oh, uh, one thing might help, Detective. This is a book you'll find in every Hollywood library. Biography and screen credits on everybody still active in the business. Uh, background on all of us. I'm in it. Briscoe's in it. Walker's in it. Belinda, too. I... What are you shooting tomorrow? An earthquake scene. That's the name of our picture. Earthquake. Breakaway set? Nothing dangerous, if that's what you're thinking. Will you tell him Belinda her calls for 10 o'clock and makeup? And she'll need her script. We start on page 30. Get me the police, please. Can you put me through to Lieutenant Malnick and Homicide? Tell him it's Dan Adams of Coronado. Yeah. Dan Adams, I'll put him through. Dan, when'd you get into town? I'll do anything but play golf with you for money. Tonight? Why tonight? Well, I wouldn't ask for your help if I had more time. But I want to get in the studio tonight. And I want to get in the bank before opening hours tomorrow morning. I'll meet you at the police lab in 30 minutes. I need some equipment. Oh, I'll need a man to take my place here, babysitting. Huh? How old is the babe? Ah, I mean, baby. <laughs> Jack. Any trouble? No. Just go seem happy to have me. Walk was hurt pretty bad in the stagecoach accident. It doesn't feel up to the stunt. And depending on you to see that she doesn't get hurt in case anything goes wrong, you'll be the only one that's close to her. The horse rider on location's a friend of mine. I talked to him. The stagecoach and the horse when the saddle slipped was no accident. Somebody had to be around him just before the action. That's true, of course, but who? Four of them at different times. You're looking at all of them. Briscoe, Walker, Pete Brakeman, and Miss Daly. They need you for the lighting, Jack. The place, Southern California. The time, 1857, the year of the really big shake. I read the script. And looked over the set, too, I'll wager. But how do you shake it up? Seems pretty solid to me. We don't. We shake the camera. <laughs> and now I've disillusioned you. But seriously, a man pulls on the rope and the, the beams fall. The balsa wood beams. 
They're ready, Pete. Let's get things rolling, shall we? Good morning, Mr. Adams. Oh, good morning. Are you planning to have a double for Miss Daly? No, she wants to do it herself. There's a fan magazine writer on the set. If you ever said anything nice about me, it would shake me up more than an earthquake. You look shook up even without a quake. So let's put it on film. If you can remember your line. I have one word. Cleat. Well, that you should be able to handle. Now, this is going to be a take. The only take, let us pray. Jack, you're over here on the cot, recuperating from the bullet wound. And Belinda's in this chair when the quake starts. Now, this first beam catches you. And when Belinda starts to get up from the table to run and run and help Jack, this second beam comes down and pins you to the table. Now, we'll, uh, we'll cut there and come in for close-ups and dialogue. Oh, and be sure that you keep your face away from the camera. And please, both of you, don't anticipate the beams. This second beam falls on Miss Daly? That's right. Would it hurt anything if you dropped the beam just a dry run without Miss Daly on the set? Mr. Adams, you're a guest on this set, and I don't want to seem inhospitable. Would it hurt anything? Adams, you're out of line. Just the beam, not the whole set. Now, would it hurt anything? Maybe it wouldn't hurt anything. We can't afford the time. Are you afraid to drop it? You've had a lot of accidents on this picture. You afraid? Special effects, drop this beam. All right, everybody, clear the set. Come on. Mistake, Pete. This is not a balsa wood beam, it's solid oak. Pete thought it was balsa wood. You just forgot to tell him you'd switched. What kind of talk is that? We may never be able to prove that you tampered with that stagecoach, but I think we can prove that you switched that beam sometime during the night. I couldn't even lift a balsa wood beam, much less one of these things. I'm a sick man. Why, you rotten. <laughs> sick man, eh? That's not what your biography says. Says Jay Briscoe, outstanding college athlete. And I wanted to kill my own leading lady? Lose five days of shooting? I'll lay it all out for you. You weren't interested in your picture. I spent two hours going over your financing this morning. You're broke, but you have half a million dollars accident insurance on your leading lady, Miss Daly. You're the only one that would benefit from her death. I told you the other day, there are a thousand people that hate her enough to kill her. You're the only person I talk to that really hates her. Well, now you tell all that nonsense to the police, and they'll laugh you out of the detective business. Lieutenant Malnick isn't laughing. He's on the homicide squad. Well, you can't prove anything on me. Yes, I can. Let me see your hands. I dusted those beams with dye last night, the balsa wood beams. Linda Daly never cries, but she just lost her favorite boyfriend. Just lost a thousand or two imaginary enemies. <laughs> 